Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Wonderful. Well, we are still in Easter time, so it's good to know we are still on it this morning. Uh, my name's Stephen, I'm the Associate Vicar. Um, and my name is Megan, and I'm the Youth Pastor. Uh, we're going to be worshipping uh, together all ages uh, this morning, which we're excited about. We'd love to invite you to take a moment just to turn around and welcome those uh, who've joined us uh, this morning uh, to church. Well, you would think that there wasn't much going on being the Easter holidays this week, but we do have a number of notices. Thursday? Thursday, oh, there is a meeting point, which is our seniors ministry, and they are going to be meeting here at 12 p.m. And we've got something of a super Saturday coming up as oh, well. So many things going on Saturday. What's going on? So, men's prayer breakfast starts, kicks us off at 8 a.m. Okay. Um, and then, if you are in the 20s to 30s, at uh, 10.30 a.m., there is a brunch. Okay. And then, and then, to round us all off, all ages, all peoples, yeah. um, there's a 7 p.m. games night. Okay, so if you were a man in your <laughs> 20s and 30s who likes playing games, you could spend, what, like seven hours here on Saturday? Yeah, and yeah. be happy about it, I and, and be happy about it. Well, we don't have to wait till Saturday evening for a game, do we, Megan? We're going to actually uh, begin our service uh, with a bit of a game, a bit of a quiz. Do you want to talk us through it, Megan? Oh, yeah, I'm so excited, and you'll, you'll get um, used to my... Uh, the kind of quizzes we enjoy at youth here. So this is an Easter trivia quiz, and this is a, a nice, fun, light-hearted quiz to get us going. Um, it, the really, really easy first question. So here's the first question. Um, what is the name of God's son who died on the cross on Good Friday and rose again Easter Sunday? This is a hard one. Who, yeah? Who is it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Uh, this is a, yeah, this is the classic youth here. Can anyone else tell me? Someone more reliable? Can you tell me? Jesus. Hey, there we go. It's Jesus. Nice and easy. These are going to get harder though, aren't they? <laughs> oh, no. All right, next one. Bluey and Bingo go on an Easter egg hunt during this episode, but who do we celebrate beating, F on, beating death on Easter Day? Mm. Who is it? Yeah. No. No, no! Who is it? Is it? Yep, yeah, it's Jesus. We See, some of you right. are getting this. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Come on, let's crack through. Okay, so this one's a bit harder. One train leaves Chicago Union Station at 1 p.m. and another leaves New York Penn Station at 3 p.m. But who do we know died again, died and rose again three days later? <laughs> Can anyone tell me? It's Jesus! Jesus. There yeah. we go. All right, we're getting harder still. Okay, the distance between Cleopatra and the creation of the pyramids is about the same as Cleopatra and us now. She was born in 46 BC. What does the C in BC mean? Jesus Christ. Yeah. I did hear a few people say Christ, actually. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Bonus point for getting Yeah, Christ. bonus yeah. point, indeed. All right, we're getting hard. Final question. Lastly, what is small, furry, has a tail, and loves storing nuts in their cheeks? <laughs> it's... No, it's a squirrel. <laughs> it is definitely And that is our game. Thank you, guys. Well, well done. And, of course, uh, it is all about Jesus. And this, uh, this morning, we're going to be looking uh, through Luke 24, uh, what it means for us as Jesus' followers to recognise and meet um, with Jesus. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, and then uh, we're going to stand and worship. So from Luke 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. 
They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Then they came back from the tomb. They told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told it to the, the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up, ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen If you're able, let's stand and let's worship Jesus together.
take a seat as we turn our hearts toward the Lord uh, in confession this morning. I'm going to use uh, the words on the screen. Uh, Please use the response in yellow. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples locked behind doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal you and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, And as we do uh, at this point in all of our morning services, we're going to use together our offertory prayer, remembering that he is the great giver and everything of our own uh, we uh, give back in worship to him. Let's use these words together. Lord, we give joyfully because you have held nothing back from us. Lord, we give generously because we want to become like you. Lord, we give sacrificially because we want others to taste the life of your kingdom. Father, receive these gifts and use them for your glory. Amen. I'm going to now invite Judith to come and bring the next part of our reading. Luke 24, beginning to read at verse 13. On the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked with them but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. This is the word of the Lord. Well, you probably wouldn't be the first nor the last person to have heard that reading and thought it sounds like a little bit of a game of guess who. Well, Megan, you've got for us our next game uh, this morning. (laughs) I do, I do. Um, And just so you guys know, um, if there are any um, children who are struggling to focus who would like a colouring sheet, we have some colouring sheets. Um, In fact, can you guys hand out these colouring sheets to any if you just go around? Um, But this will be enough entertainment for everyone. This is Who is That Bible Character? And it goes like this. 
So there is a, a drawing, a very lovely, amazing drawing, thank you, of a, a Bible character and uh, of someone dressed up as that Bible character. So see if you can first guess the Bible character, which of course you will because my drawing skills are, ama are amazing, and then see if you can guess who it is. So here is the first one. Who is hanging out in Hotspot? I wonder. I, I see a crown there, so it's got to be some sort of royal figure. Yeah, I reckon. In the Bible. I reckon. We'll see. Well, let's let's re let's take away some more. Oh, some royal robes. Right, right, wise king, is it Solomon? Yeah. Is it actually? It is, is Solomon. It? Good job. But who is the key question? Who is disguised? Who on our staff team? I think, I think Karine knows. <laughs> Who is it? Manny. It's Manny! Manny! It's Solomon Manny! Yeah, the wisdom of Solomon, there we go. It, it's uh, pretty accurate, right, I reckon. Next character. Okay, who is sitting in this castle? Who do we know is a Bible character that lived probably not in a castle like that, a similar castle? Hmm. Let's, let's take away a couple more. Oh. Royal, the royal figure. Royal, yes. King Honestly, I've got to stop asking you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, any any queens in the Bible? Yeah. Oh, I think you've got it straight away. Got the it's not member. the Bible character. It's Esther. And who who is Esther? Can you say it? Yeah. It's Vim. Vim. Also I'm, enjoying her Easter holidays. Yes. <laughs> she has given me permission for this. I promise. Um, right. Who's next? Ooh. Who do we know? Oh, Which fire. Bible character has a fire? fire? And a stick. Yes. It's Moses or the Prince of Egypt. Which is where the inspiration came. Who would be? Moses, what an inspiring leader. <laughs> <laughs> Who could it be? Shall we go to the next one? Give us a bit more facial. Who is it? Who do, do you know who it is? It is. It's Steve. It's Moses Steve. Can I grow my hair again like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next one. Is, All right. is, a, a last, is this the last one? No, the one before the last one. We've got we've got another woman who could be in the stable. Who? Mary. Mary. Good job. Who is Mary? Who is this beautiful oh, lady? I heard I heard some muttings. Who is it? It's Joy. Ah, oh, look how Joy, beautiful. you make a great Mary. <laughs> Excellent drawing, if I say so myself. Right, this is the expert level. Who is this Bible character? Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. It's Noah. And who? Well, let's give a bit Kevin's more. Kevin's not technically Who on do table. we know on staff team who could possibly be Noah? Well, let's see. It is. It's James. If you do not know James, you should get to know James. Yeah, James wants <laughs> for. Um, and so I'm going to um, share a little bit uh, off the back of that reading we've just heard in a minute. The other thing you might have realised, we've got um, lots of Duplo here. Now we are going into the Easter theme still today, and so we would love to invite any children who uh, are any good and enjoy building to come and build for us uh, on uh, here uh, an Easter garden and. Uh, and there's a list of things that we must have in our Easter garden, and we're going to need that for our prayers. Um, so if anyone else wants to come and assist, um, you are welcome. So in this story so far, we have um, been faced with these questions of, well, who is this Jesus? What has this Jesus done? What will keep you and I from recognising him? And, and when we do recognise Jesus, um, what will we then um, do about it? I love Luke's account of this first uh, Easter day. We start off with the amazement uh, of the empty tomb. And now, in that second bit of the reading, we hear the uh, account unfolding of these two of Jesus' um, followers. They're on this walk together. Uh, it's about seven miles, so roughly the distance from uh, here to Whitstable, if you've ever done the Crab and Winkle Way with a friend. And they're walking and they're talking together. And they're talking about what has just happened. And as they're walking, another figure walks up behind and starts joining in on this conversation. And they start talking about the claims of what has just happened in Jerusalem. But they still don't know who this figure is. 
But it's not necessarily their fault because it says that they were kept from recognising him. When Jesus then, uh, in his sort of disguised way, inquires uh, towards these two followers what's happened, it's like he's playing dumb. It's like he's having a joke uh, at their expense. And he is, in a sense, pretending to be the only one in Jerusalem who doesn't know about the events that have happened around the cross and resurrection. Of course, Jesus knew all about them because he was the central figure. It was all about him. And the disciples are sucked in to Jesus' questioning. And they say this. They say, oh, don't you know about this guy? It was Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. You imagine Jesus listening to these words. Like, go on. (laughs) The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Fascinating grammar there at work in Luke's Gospel. They had hoped. They had hoped because now, at this moment, as they're walking on this seven-mile walk, they have given up hope. They've averted their eyes to the truth that is uh, standing, uh, walking along uh, that road with them. They may have been the first to fail to um, recognise the resurrected Jesus. But we know that they aren't the last people in the world, in history, to recognise the resurrected Jesus. Because although we believe, we also know that the resurrection doesn't make sense. It's not rational. Dead people don't rise unless, unless they do unless in the one person, in Jesus Christ, it actually happened. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, doesn't fit onto any other worldview. It can't be computed in any other way of thinking, except a worldview which holds the resurrection of Jesus at its very centre and as its very basis too. But the two disciples, they are so far from recognising, so far from believing the resurrection at that moment. You know, they've even heard the stories of the women going to the tomb. But instead, they've lost hope. They think that the cross has ended everything in defeat. And so they've given up their hope. There was a 20th century uh, theologian, a missionary uh, to India, uh, who had spent about 40 years, most of his life, working there, sharing the good news about Jesus and his resurrection in India. He knew something about hope, and he knew something about helping people recognise Jesus. This man, Leslie Newbigin, later wrote about the resurrection. He said this, The resurrection is the revelation to chosen witnesses of the fact that Jesus, who died on the cross, is indeed king, conqueror of death and sin, Lord and saviour of all. The resurrection is not the reversal of a defeat, but the proclamation of a victory. The king reigns from the tree. I share that because it's one of my favourite Easter quotes. Because the death and resurrection of Jesus shouldn't have actually been a surprise to his disciples. And so this moment uh, in Luke's Gospel, it isn't a case of Jesus saying, I told you so. It's more of a case of, I told you multiple times. And that's not even to mention the prophets who prophesied about this multiple times too. It's the biggest moment in human history and it deals with sin and it deals with death. And this victory is proclaimed through the foolishness of the cross and the head-scratching wonder of the resurrection. And so you can imagine where they are on their walk. Maybe they're about halfway uh, at this stage and they've only got a few miles left 
And so they start talking about how through the prophets and through the writings of Moses and the Torah, what we now call the Old Testament, the story of Jesus, his death and resurrection, begins to make sense. I'm going to show you some pictures uh, from one of my favourite children's storybook Bibles. And, and I wonder uh, if Jesus could have had a resource with him on the road to Emmaus. He would have loved to have had these images with him. And, it, and you can imagine him almost asking the questions. Remember when God promised Abraham uh, that his descendants would one day outnumber the stars? Well, what about in the resurrected Jesus? What about in those who believe that they would outnumber the stars? Or what about you remember when God promised promised that he would reign forever as a forever king? Or what about, do you remember the time when that suffering servant in Isaiah would be led uh, like a lamb to the slaughter? Do you remember that in scripture? Do you remember how that sacrificial system needed blood for the forgiveness of sins? Do you remember when God promised his presence to his people forever? Not through a temple, but now through a person. Do you remember that in the shadow of the fall, when sin had entered the world, that God promised that one day man would trample on that serpent again, once and for all? Wow, it's beginning to make sense, although they haven't recognised it yet. It's beginning to feel a lot like Easter. And so when we gather here on a Sunday, Sunday by Sunday, we continue to witness uh, to and proclaim the truth and the wonder of that resurrection. And so in a moment, we're going to stand, we're going to sing. Uh, These guys, you need to start finishing off, um, uh, because the rest of you, we're going to need your help for some actions. So if you're able, let's stand together as we sing our next songs.
Great. Do take a seat as Megan and our young people lead us in our prayers. First, we are going to pray for countries like Haiti, Gaza and Ukraine, who are in terrible states and in some cases, people living in conditions that we cannot imagine. We also pray that they do not fear and that God fills their hearts with courage and bravery and that they know that they are part of God's plan. I pray that our upcoming election is fair and just, just like you, Lord, and not corrupted like some other countries and that you, Lord God, will show them how to run our country and aspire to make the world a better place. Lord, we cannot comprehend your overflowing love for every individual on this planet, and we hope that today you can show us in church just how great your love is and show us how to be better people. So finally, Lord, we pray that you can fill every single thing on this planet with hope, and like Romans 15, verse 13, May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So fill everyone with that hope, Lord God. Amen. Look at the flowers in the Easter garden. As this garden is laden with flowers, we were reminded of a passage in Matthew. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes for a glass, glass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Why this passage is an encouraging reminder, we also take time to lift our worries to you, Lord. You have provided for the flowers, and you will provide for those who worry about war, exams, climate change, and poverty. Amen. Look at the cross in the Easter garden. This Easter garden is not the first significant garden in God's story. We think they're actually the first garden and the sin that separated us from God and the cross on which he died. We ask for forgiveness for our sins and take time to repent our wrongdoings so that we can be closer to you. Amen. The Easter garden is lined with rocks, and as the rocks cry out in praise, we take this time to thank God. Thank you, God, for education. Thank you for the chance to learn new things. Thank you, God, for the holidays. Thank you for the chance to rest and celebrate with family and friends. Thank you, God, for our parents. Thank you that they support us and help us. Thank you, God, for our houses. Thank you that they provide to them shelter from bad weather. Even though we know of the good news that happened three days later, we think of a woman who wept and mourned his death, arriving that Easter morning. Even though we know of a greater future ahead, we think now of those in pain or suffering we are weeping with today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, and as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to tempt into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Um, Tustin's now going to come and do our final part of our reading. <coughs> The reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 28 to 35. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at a table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and, gave, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and it disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Again, in this final part of our reading, we see that um, Jesus is uh, having a great time. It it almost seems like he's toying uh, with them. And uh, he's walking, it says, as if he were going further. But you can be sure Jesus knew exactly what he wanted to do and where he wanted to go. What incredible humour, I think. And upon their invitation, Jesus accepts that invitation and goes in to stay. I think it's always been true, and it's definitely true in that moment. And I wonder if it's true for us as we prepare our hearts to respond to his word, to his call this morning, to know that God goes where he's wanted. And as those disciples, though they haven't quite recognised at this moment, they want in, they want to know more. And so they invite Jesus uh, in. The disciples, uh, as we know, um, they had uh, lost hope. They had so far uh, to this point failed to recognise, but they wanted to keep that conversation going. They wanted to find the truth. And the wonderful thing at the end of this story is the truth comes, that penny-dropping moment, in the breaking of the bread. And uh, one of these wonderful moments in scripture that we just can't explain. But as they realize, and as Jesus breaks the bread, they look up and Jesus has disappeared. He's no longer there in that room uh, with them. And they reflect in that moment because they're like, something big has happened here. (laughs) Which, you know, when someone disappears, uh, that's a good thing to, to ask. And they say, we're not our hearts burning within us as we walked along that road. The dots are beginning to connect up. The questions that they've had are beginning to be answered. They're beginning to recognise. It's like those squares coming away from the picture who Jesus uh, really is. And we see their response. They get up quickly, they find other believers, and they assemble together to declare it is true. It is true. And that's one of the things that we do when we gather together, Sunday by Sunday. We witness to the fact, we testify together that it is true. That's why we declare um, that he is risen. We are saying that it is true. And as we uh, continue this wonderful Easter tradition of being that Easter people who believe in the good news of the resurrection, uh, I wonder um, if we, as that um, faithful people living in the light of that great good news, we might become uh, more like these, these six things that I believe should be true of us as the Easter people. Um, the first thing is that for us to become more a community of praise and, and how the world needs us to be this community of praise, a world with doubt and a world with scepticism, a world with with kind of veiled faces where they can't see uh, the truth, and we get to be that community of praise. I wonder if we might be a community of truth as well. In a pluralistic society where that means where people believe whatever they want to believe in all sorts of different ways that promotes relativism, yeah, you can believe what you like, your truth is your truth but we get to be a community of truth that that proclaims um, that he has done it, he has risen. And that we might also grow in being a selfless community that does not live for itself, but is deeply involved in the concerns of its neighbourhood and that selfish world. Even here in that story of the disciples into Road to Emmaus, there's a place for hospitality, for welcoming in uh, the stranger. 
that we might too become uh, more of that selfless community. Fourthly, uh, we might become more a community prepared to live out the gospel in public life in a world that privatises all other religious claims. I love that in, uh, their response in this story is that they go quickly. There's, there's a message to be passed on. There's a job uh, to be done. And we're not supposed to uh, keep quiet about our faith. It's not supposed uh, to be a secret. Maybe the Lord wants to embolden you uh, for that task in sharing uh, the good news today. Fifthly, we want to grow in becoming a community um, that uh, is responsible in a world of uh, individualism or hyper-individualism. It's not all about me. It's not all about I. It's uh, about each other as well. How we love one another is how we show the world that we are his disciples. And lastly, and didn't those disciples as they walked along the road feel this? They were in despair. They were without hope. And to a world full of despair, full of uh, pessimism about the future, that kind of groaning, oh, do I have to do this? Does that really it? Is, there, is, is, there, you know, is this all I've got in life? We get to be a community of hope in the world. And those of you who are at Ashburnham, you'll remember our giant helium balloons with the word hope. Uh, you'll remember our uh, verse on the bookmark we gave out, uh, Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are uh, a people, we are an Easter people, and therefore we are a people of hope, with a hope to bring uh, to the world. We're going to come and share a Holy Communion uh, in just a moment with three stations. And, uh, and as those uh, two disciples, they walked along the road, their hearts were burning within them. They began, uh, as they looked back, to recognise who the risen Jesus was. And uh, if you're here this morning and you too have recognised who Jesus is, that you believe in him and trust him as your Lord and Saviour, we want to invite you uh, to come and share with us in Holy Communion too. If you think, actually, I'm not sure yet. I'm still on that road. I'm still asking those questions. I'm still trying to find it out. Well, there's still an invitation for you to come forward and receive uh, just a little prayer uh, as you come forward. So keep your hands down if you'd just like to um, receive a prayer. And so as um, we pray, don't we, that we would now meet with Jesus in the breaking of the bread as we break bread together this morning. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another now a sign of that peace. So I've got Brian instead. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you very much. A reminder, as we share together, that uh, bread is gluten-free. It's all gluten-free. And if you'd prefer to receive in one cup only, uh, that's uh, fine as well. We will be using the three stations, two here, one up in the chancel end uh, as well. Lord Jesus, be present to us now. You are risen high priest. Make yourself known to us in the breaking of this bread. And let's just pause for a moment's stillness before we use these words on the screen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Let's stand together if you're able. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. 
When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. For those who are helping distribute, please come and join.
say together the words of the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. In a moment, we're going to have our final uh, song before uh, we go out for uh, tea, coffee and biscuits. I want to make an invitation for you this morning. Our prayer ministry team will be available uh, for you and the Chancellor if you'd like to receive prayer for anything. And as we were praying before the service, um, a, couple, a word and a picture uh, were given uh, that might be uh, for someone here this morning. The first was uh, rather uh, cliche, but uh, of an ostrich uh, burying its head in the sand. Uh, and maybe that's even a, a word or a phrase that you've even said over yourself uh, recently. I'm, I feel like I'm burying my head in the sand. And the Lord might say to you, I haven't created the ostrich to bury its head in the sand, but for it to run fast and free. And so for those who feel like you've been burying your head in the sand, the Lord invites you to turn from that, to be set free and to run in the ways that he has made um, for you. And the other word was just for those who are feeling particularly discouraged at this time, that the Lord would give you that courage and that you might take that courage in him as well. So prayer ministry will be available uh, from now uh, through to after um, the service. But let's remain standing as we sing our final song.
Amen. How good it is to testify to the truth of that resurrection in company with brothers and sisters this morning. Thank you. Uh, Any historians among you longing to know what the uh, tomb of Joseph of Arimathea uh, looked like? Um, Wonder no more. Uh, You can come and visit the tomb uh, yourself uh, after the service. We'd love to invite you to stay uh, for refreshments, especially if you're new or visiting. Please come and introduce yourself to one of the welcome team uh, or myself as well. Uh, Our evening services are back on uh, tonight uh, as we back into uh, Matthew's Gospel and we'll be starting our sermon series next week on Isaiah. Let me pray for us as we enter this new week. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.